Hey, Scott. Happy February. How are you? Happy February. I am fantastic, Robin. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm excited uh, for our guest tonight and having people learn some of the, the, the great things he's going to share. And I think everybody pretty much has guessed now who the <laughs> guest, who our guest tonight will be, uh, right. especially with all the clues dropped this week. And then now with the opening, uh, it's clear that we have Mike T as our guest on our show tonight. I'm so excited about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no better person to talk about not just the great tools that we have and how to use them, but just the passion and energy, as we said in the tweets this week. Uh, you can't really top the the energy he brings to the stage every single time. Yeah, absolutely. So without further ado, because we want to give everybody all the mic time that they want tonight <laughs> on the show. Uh, and we are definitely going to spend this particular episode tonight talking about technology tools to enhance student learning. Uh, so let's bring on our, uh, our favorite guest, Mike T. Mike Thelson to the show. Hey, Mike. Hey, thanks so, for Mike, having me. You? you bet. Great. How's it going in uh, the Redmond area? Oh, you know, it's kind of that Northwest uh, winter where it's kind of gray and sprinkly and mixed every day. You know, <laughs> I'm hanging out indoors most of the time, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> Trudging through. Right. Uh huh. Well, so Mike, uh, we're excited to have everybody here join with us. And thanks for all our friends who are joining us on the, in the show right now. Lots of comments coming in. Uh, people are still guessing, oh yeah, it's Mike on the show. Um, <laughs> so without further ado, Mike, uh, let's just, you know, right now is busy time of year. It's, it's started the second semester of the school year. It's also kind of beginning to be that springtime conference season. So I know we had lots of great announcements at the BET conference over in the UK, which streamed live this year, free for everybody, uh, followed right quickly by FETC again, it was a free offering this year, which was fantastic. And then right now this week, we're actually live at TCA going on as well. Um, so with all of that, we've, as a company, Microsoft, been releasing lots of new product features and updates that have been top te teacher requests. Uh, so I, I'll kick it over to you. So what are some of your favorite new features that we've recently launched? Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff coming out. I think my personal favorite is the one that's just rolling out right now, which is presenter view in Teams or presenter mode. And that's just been one of the probably tied for the top two requests I've heard. The other one I'll talk about in a second. But presenter view lets you, the educator, share your PowerPoint. But on your side, behind the scenes, you can see your notes. You can still see all the video. You can see the chat. You can see the all the people who are in the meeting. So it's kind of like a command center because for a while it was always tricky to see like, well, I can see the PowerPoint, but I can't see the chat or then I can't see the video, but I can see this. So presenter view is really designed to be just like the PowerPoint presenter mode, if you've seen that, but bringing that into Teams. And then we also announced that very soon in the future beyond that, maybe in the next couple of months, you'll even get the tools like laser pointer and inking on the slide and all those same pieces. That's all coming into Teams too. So that's probably my very favorite but soon after that is the disable meeting chat in real time feature in your meetings. And so that's been another, I mean, when we announced that there were lots of cheers, virtual cheers going up in the education world, because that means if I'm in a meeting and I want to disable the chat in real time, I can just go to meeting options within the meeting and just say, disable the chat, or I can do something like disable the chat before it even starts. And so also like, you know, Robin and, and Scott, you guys have done, uh, webinars, right? If you're doing a Teams meeting where you'd have maybe 100 people in a webinar, sometimes you're like, I don't want any chat going on. I just want that disabled. You can disable it before the meeting ever starts, which is also handy. And then the other thing you can do is you can say a setting to say only allow chat during the meeting. That means that, you know, Robin and I can't go off at midnight and use the meeting chat that's still open and be chatting <laughs> over there. Uh, it just means only during the meeting can chat happen. Otherwise, it's disabled. So those are two top ones. And then on the uh, inclusive and accessible side, he had a huge announcement. I would say yesterday, actually, yesterday morning. And we announced that Discovery Education is integrating the immersive reader. It's actually just started rolling out. And so Discovery Education is a huge popular content tool in the world of EDU. And they've integrated immersive reader, which is awesome. And then the PowerPoint immersive reader integration is coming out very soon. It got delayed a little bit but it's coming out very soon, as is the OneDrive integration with Immersive Reader. So any document in OneDrive, you'll be able to select a Word doc or a text file and launch the Immersive Reader directly in OneDrive. And then the last one that 
is in Flipgrid. It's not brand new, but it's probably like a month old, is mic only mode. So for students that don't want to show their camera or maybe you're giving an assignment that's like a podcast style assignment, we've got mic only mode. So you get the pulsating microphone. You can still give unicorns in the background around your microphone if you want. That's my favorite personally. And you can still submit your podcast, submit your assignment with no video. And that's rolled out now, mic only mode. And, and I've got videos of all those and how to do them uh, on my YouTube channel, which you know, I was going to, Scott and I were going to maybe chat about some of the stuff that <laughs> I've been doing there because I've been busy making, making videos. <laughs> yeah. And you bring up, it's obviously a perfect segue, but social media, Mike, has be, really become such a big part of communication in general. And I know as an educator, that's the first place I go to either request something or find out about something. So in addition to YouTube, like talk about just how that social media, how all the platforms, not just one of them, have changed what you do and all the things you're doing on, you know, YouTube, Twitter, and now TikTok, you're going crazy on TikTok. So <laughs> tell us all about that. Yeah. So, and yeah, like you said, especially during the pandemic, I had never made a YouTube video really before the pandemic started because there, there was such a hunger for information that happened about how do I use this? How do I do that? My school just needs to adopt this really fast. So kind of on a whim started making YouTube videos and they became pretty popular in terms of just access to that information. And I've made a bunch of them since April and you, know, you had my YouTube channel on there earlier. And actually I'll walk through a little bit today because just showing the different categories of stuff. But then uh, probably, well, I experimented with TikTok last summer a little bit and you know, I didn't really understand it fully. I made a few little things, but I took another crack at it starting in, uh, in early January, just a couple of weeks ago and started at it again, learned a couple things, and holy moly, they've, they've, got some, uh, they've gotten popular. <laughs> like I went from a few hundred followers to over 25,000 followers now very quickly. TikTok right. is kind of one of those viral platforms. But the feedback has been super positive because I, I kind of joke, you know, YouTube was meant to be quick tip videos, which, you know, three to five minutes, but some people want less than one minute, which is TikTok. So I call them micro tips. Super short, little like flip on TikTok, learn something fast, you know, go on to the next thing. And so I've been doing that. And the third one besides Twitter that we've been experimenting with is Clubhouse, which is a brand new audio only platform that lets you be in real time conversation in these little rooms. And you, we've started a Microsoft feedback room in Clubhouse. It's been invite only. But a lot of educators have really started flooding in in the last few weeks. And so for those of you out there that have heard of Clubhouse or wonder what it is, it, it's quite cool. It's very different. It's audio only. And it's kind of a whole new medium. I, imagine if you were at an ed tech conference and the ability to walk down the hallway and sort of poke your head in a room and listen, oh, there's a really cool panel happening with so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Like That's like Clubhouse, a virtual version of that. Without seeing the person, it's like, there's moderators. You can listen to really interesting conversations and you can kind of, it's like walking down the hallway and, you know, TCEA and like, listen. oh yeah, here Leslie Fisher in there. I'm going to go check that out. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So those are the three that I've been experimenting a lot more on. But then if you let me share my screen here, I'll actually show a few things and sort of how it works. Please do. Okay. Let me hit the old screen share here. One second. And I will share, I'll just share my entire screen. So first off, my YouTube channel. And, and again, Scott had that up on screen. It's youtube.com forward slash Mike Tholfson. But you can see here there's quick tip videos. And the way that it is organized, I've got a bunch of Teams videos. So I've got in playlists. I've got a whole lot of playlists. I can show here. You've got Teams playlists, the advanced, the basics, Teams meetings. We have uh, things like OneNote quick tip videos, like 18 tips and tricks for class notebook, math tools in OneNote, PowerPoint quick tips. There's like five different Teams playlists. There's the basics, there's advanced, there's Teams meetings, there's that new presenter view, uh, Teams quick tips, and then Teams for education. And most Office apps, so Word, Forms, OneNote, PowerPoint, Stream, even Edge. Edge has a bunch of great new features. And so, and then, Oops, that didn't mean to even launch that one. And then also uh, we have all of the inclusive and accessible videos. 
And so that's been one. Whoop, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm clicking buttons uh, that I didn't mean to. The inclusive and accessible videos are also, let me go back there, a bunch of accessibility videos. So everything you've ever wanted around things like immersive reader and inclusive reading, inclusive writing, English language learners, inclusive writing tools. So I've been uploading here fairly regularly and I'm always putting up new videos. I'd love to hear what you wanna hear videos about. So check this out and, and subscribe if you have a chance and I'll be putting out new videos. <clears throat> the other one is my TikTok account. And so this is one that is much newer and my, my alias is on TikTok is M. Tholfson or at M. Tholfson. But you can see there's just a bunch of these little, all of them are one minute or less, how to make a great image in PowerPoint, cleaning up your Outlook inbox, how to use presenter coach in PowerPoint, team shortcuts, how to add a break timer in PowerPoint, just all sorts of stuff. And the idea is that all of this is in one minute or less. And so... It's really easy for me to record these too. Half the time I already have them recorded for my YouTube channel and I just recut them and film my laptop in vertical mode and you know have a little bit of a, uh, a couple of captions added. But this is really nice. Just if you have a couple of minutes, check that out. You can flip through and, and learn a, you know, a tip a day if you want or two tips a day. So those are two things that I've had a lot of fun with recently and, and educators have found a lot of value in. And then the last thing I'll show, we, we talked about my favorite new video or my favorite new features. I've been presenting a lot in the last two weeks at FETC and ATIA, which is our, our really big assistive technology conference, uh, national conference for assistive tech, and then also TCEA for in Texas. And so I've been sharing a lot of the latest updates. So here's one example here, code.org and the immersive reader. So for those of you that didn't know, code.org now has the Immersive Reader integrated. And I mentioned Discovery Education. We're just rolling out the Immersive Reader into Outlook Desktop. And you can see that here. We're going to have the Immersive Reader in PowerPoint in the web very soon. So you'll be able to select any text in PowerPoint, launch the Immersive Reader, select the notes in PowerPoint, launch the Immersive Reader. Mentioned OneDrive in the Immersive Reader. So you can see here where you can select any document and then say open and then choose open an immersive reader. That'll be rolling out probably in a month or maybe a little more. The other one is that uh, Math Solver immersive reader. For those of you who don't know what the Math Solver is, that allows you to take a photo of any math problem and then it runs OCR and you can get the steps just like in OneNote. So you can say, view the solution steps of that photo and then you can even launch the immersive reader on that math problem. So I can like translate the math problem, read it out loud, do picture dictionary, everything from just taking a picture of math. So thinking about remote learning and pandemic, hugely helpful for students. It's on iPhone or Android or iPad and it's free. Another one that's just rolling out into Teams is speaker attribution and transcription. So that ability to have people's names next to the captions when they're talking. So I can turn on live captions, and then, so when I'm talking, my name shows. When other people are talking, their name shows. I will be able to get a transcript of the entire conversation. And so uh, in this case, you'll be able to see down below when Abby's talking and then Gabby's talking that their names will show up. So that's called speaker attribution. And then when I'm done, I can hit stop on the video and the entire transcript is saved and available in the meeting afterwards. So that's gonna be rolling out very soon. It's not quite out yet, but you can see I can, I'll stop recording, but the entire transcription shows up on the right-hand side. So what you're gonna see on the right is the entire transcription right there. And when I'm done with the meeting, that transcription will be available in the meeting details. So you can see right here, there's a transcript. I can download it, I can open it, entire transcript right there in Teams. So super inclusive feature, I'm excited about that one. And then coming soon, this is really cool. Dynamic views. You can see that's like newscast review, a built-in green screen for Teams. You can also move the videos around. So you see the videos in the upper right. You can customize that. Think about American Sign Language or, or Sign Language interpreters, having them pinned to the top or overlaid on the screen. A lot of really cool options. Thinking about your students and how they can make their presentations more engaging over Teams. That's coming in March. And that's that one's going to be a game changer, I think, personally. And then... Meeting recap is another one where when the meeting is done, 
think about having the recording, the transcript, the notes, everything in one place. That's going to be rolling out fairly soon as well. So hopefully that gives you a sense of some of my, my favorite stuff that's going to be coming out. And, uh, you know, happy to talk about other questions or anything else that are on people's minds. Yeah. So if anybody has any additional questions, you feel free to drop them in uh, the chat and whatever platform you're on right now, we can see those coming through. So if there's any questions for Mike, feel free to put them there. We'll get those handled. Uh, Scott, uh, out of all of what Mike to show, which one's your favorite feature, new feature release? Oh my gosh. Uh, how much time do we have to talk about all of them? I think, uh, I think for me, it's dynamic view. I think that's really going to kick some of these hybrid and online classroom settings up a notch to still feel like you're in front of the teacher. Uh, but you're still getting that content on the page. I think that's the one that's really, since you first announced it or talked about it, that's kind of been on my mind. So I'm super excited to see that coming. But just the, I mean, the the summation of meeting notes and transcripts all coming in one place. I mean, it's really, it's really going to enhance the classroom setting, whether we're still in hybrid or even if we're coming back to full face-to-face -face soon in our schools, uh, you know, it's, it's still going to help communication. So I'm looking forward to all of it. How about you, Robin? What's your favorite? Um, I was going to go with Dynamic View as well, but I, I don't know. It's a pretty <laughs> close race with just the the con other partners that are really continuing to embrace the immersive reader and build into their platform. So I love Discovery Education. When I was a teacher, mm -hmm. I used it all the time in my classroom. So to see that being integrated in in this, that tool is fantastic. And and then obviously across other parts of our ecosystem as well. But the, you know, the more we can level the playing field for our learners in the classroom, the better. So I just want to see that button everywhere. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and Mike, as some of these questions come in from social media, uh, talk about from your perspective, just the impact of the interaction you get with educators on social media. I know so many of the these new features that are being rele released came from conversations with educators questions, comments, sometimes complaints, right? We teachers complain yeah. every now and then. Um, but the communication that goes back and forth on social media, talk about what a what an empowering line of back and forth that's been for you and your team at Microsoft. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's where a huge amount, like a lot of the ideas, actually majority of the ideas and feedback and iteration and prototypes come from educators or we're working with educators or they say, gosh, I had this big problem and I can't solve it. Can technology help? And, <laughs> and, and without saying, giving any details about anything, I will just say there's something coming out later in spring that is super cool. That was very much inspired by just talking. I mean, literally, I can't tell you how many times when we were building this new thing where there'd be educators on Twitter, or educators on Facebook, book asking questions about this or that, or sharing some things they've done that they spent a bunch of time wiring up and we like, can we get a call on you? We'd love to pick your brain about how you did this and what if we did that and, and running those ideas. And we've had design jams with some teachers where we're generating new ideas and we've had teachers actually come in to Redmond originally and we've done them virtually. So that's a huge source. And that also helps ensure that the thing that you actually create is gonna be embraced by teachers because they helped, you know, help give the feedback and design that process. All right. Well, now you got us all like wiggling in our chairs for what's coming out in the spring. <laughs> yeah, right, <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Can't wait. Awesome. Well, Mike, before we let you go, we wanted to see if you're down for playing a game of lightning round. Okay. Lightning all round. Right. All right. So here we go. Super fun, random questions. Uh, so tell us what your favorite food is, Mike. Favorite, oh, favorite food. I, right now I'm going to go with Mediterranean kitchen was kind of like a Lebanese Middle Eastern uh, restaurant, oh, love Med Kitchen. Yeah, you're seeing my vibe right there. <laughs> uh, all right, what's your favorite holiday? Favorite holiday? Well, probably like Christmas or I don't know. It's, it's straight up. Okay, what about your favorite sound? My favorite sound? Ooh, um, guitar? <laughs> uh, guitar music? Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I thought you maybe you were going to say your one note song, but okay. Uh, <laughs> what about your least favorite sound? My least favorite sound is like the scraping of the end of a fork on a plate, which my daughter seems to do a lot. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Get it. And by the way, don't don't doubt yourself on these. There's no right or wrong answer here, Mike. Okay. There's no grades at the end. So whatever, whatever comes out, comes out. 
uh, outside of your current job, what job or line of work would you most like to try? Um, you know, I, it, I would say there's probably two things. One would be something involved with like music software or music and technology, something, not sure what. And then I think it would be interesting. I, I, I think I don't have the, I don't know if I have what it takes, but I'd love to try to be an educator at some point. I think that'd be uh, a really interesting and fulfilling job, but it's tough. It is tough. Listen, I, I think in many ways you already are an educator by the influence you have. You're just an educator of teachers, not of K-12 students, but you're certainly doing your part there. <laughs> and then the flip side of that, what job uh, profession would you definitely not want to ever try? Oh, I can tell you that one because I did it for like a week and then I quit. I call this the, the, the worst job in the world that I can imagine. So I used to, when I was like 16, we had a big oil refinery like 20 miles from where I lived. And in the summer... The, the, the refinery shut down. They have these giant, like, 100-foot vat tanks that they would empty out of, of all the oil that was getting refined. And what you had to do is uh, wear a respirator and a full body suit and a little headlamp because it was all dark in there. And you had to go into this giant, super hot because they had, like, like, heating going on and with a scraper and a bucket in the dark with a headlamp and scrape, like, oil goo residue off concrete floors and stuff. <laughs> Imagine doing yeah. that like eight hours a day. That's like it's like living in hell is basically what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so I, after that, I was like, I'll do anything on this anything. planet but that. I don't ever – I lasted like a week and I couldn't take it. <laughs> that makes sense. I think I'd be in the same boat as you. <laughs> and we'll get you out of here on this one. Uh, at the end of your career, when all is said and done, at your retirement party, your lunch celebration, whatever it is, what do you hope folks are saying about you and the impact you've had on everyone that you've worked with? Oh, I mean, I would say I, I, I hope that I had a positive impact on educators and students and sort of the mission that they have. The, 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 the better impact we can have there that is great. I think the bonus one, maybe around Immersive Reader is, hey, he helped impact literacy at scale because that's kind of what we're trying to do. Yeah, well, I think you, you can check that box off as well, Mike. That's You've done that for sure. Uh, thank you. Well, hey, thanks so much for joining us tonight, Mike. I know uh, you have lots of people volunteering for you, for them for you to come in and teach their class if you'd like at any point in time and, <laughs> and experience the, the student view of teaching. Um, and I'm sure, you know, all of our educators that follow you on social media, they're glad to have their parents call you too anytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Thanks for having me on your show. It's been great seeing you both. Bye, everyone. Good to see thanks, you too, Mike. Mike. Thanks so much, man. Have a great night. Love uh, that guy. Fires me yeah. up every time I see him and talk to him and hear him speak. Every single time. Yeah. And if there's one thing uh, that I think we all will say is Mike is super passionate. So we're just glad to have him supporting education and, and teachers and students everywhere, really. We, we need to bottle his uh, excitement and passion in some sort of elixir or drink or something and then market that to teachers everywhere because it, uh, <laughs> it would not a fire under every school district across this country. So true. So true. Well, hey, Scott, I think we are going to get ready to wrap up our, our show tonight by, as always, ending with our epic educators. So we want to recognize uh, some teachers that are doing some really great things out there across the U.S. And so let's get ready to do this. All right. We're going to uh, go out to recognize our first epic educator tonight goes to Martha uh, Bongiorno. Uh, we are really excited about Martha uh, looking to find another way to bring emotional and social health into her classroom. So she actually is leveraging whiteboard as a different way for students to, uh, you know, grab a sticky note and uh, check in with the class, let them know how they feel, um, what's going on. Great way to add collaboration to the classroom and also check in with some so some sorry some social uh health with our students which is very very important right now essential absolutely key love this little tip our second uh, epic educator that we want to recognize is monica alice and i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna crumble her name <laughs> the last name i can i um help me out scott alice <laughs> Okay. All right. I was almost there. Uh, so we want to recognize Monica for a couple of things. One is she is choosing to 
you know, get out of her comfort zone and learn how to use Minecraft Education Edition with her fellow peers. Uh, you can see that she is coding her own version of Wonder Woman in the game here by her tweet, which I think is awesome. She's actually my favorite superhero as well. And I can prove that because, you know, she's sitting right here on my desk. <laughs> Uh, but Monica, we we're really excited that not only are you willing to get out of your comfort zone and learn, learn with your friends, but uh, that you're looking forward to integrating this technology into your classroom to give your students another place to learn how to be creative problem solvers and thinkers in the classroom. And then the last one that we have is Brittany Wilson. Um, so Brittany it was sharing actually one of the things that Mike just talked about on the show, but was using a, the PowerPoint uh, presenter coach with her students. So what PowerPoint presenter coach allows you to do is it it allows you to practice your presentation. So whether you're a teacher looking for feedback on a presentation or you're a student and you're going to be presenting to your peers or maybe a, uh, an audience, if you have a project you're going to go speak to, let's say the mayor, um, Presenter Coach allows you to do that. So she's letting her students use Presenter Coach to practice their presentation. It's a great way to maximize the, the use of AI in a technology uh, to help the technology be able to coach the students and give them really that direct feedback that they're looking for and be able to improve their skills. And uh, it doesn't require the teacher to have to sit there and you know manually listen to every single student, which obviously eats up a lot, a lot of time. And so, I love this, the presenter coach has been so popular with teachers and speakers to help us as professionals, but this is one of the first times I've really seen somebody talk about using it with their students. And I, I just, I love that, getting the students to kind of get that automatic feedback as well. I thought it was really, really cool. Absolutely. So shout out to all of you guys, uh, your amazing educators, all the work that you're doing. We'll be continuing to look for more epic educators to recognize on our next show. Um, and uh, we can also share this little tidbit of fun. So Scott, do you want to tell everybody about the Random Act of Kindness? Yeah, so this is a cool little project everybody's working on uh, in February. And you can follow Flopsy or Robin or any of the other MIE experts I know that have been tweeting and posting on Facebook about it. But um, what a great thing for us just to think about doing little random acts of kindness. So find somebody in your community, an MIE expert, showcase school, maybe just another teacher in your building and uh, do a random act of kindness for them. Obviously, we want you to share that on social and then tag somebody else in the community to kind of pay it forward, if you will, uh, and pass that along. So I, I know I've enjoyed reading the, the posts that have come across so far, and we look forward to many, many more over the course of the rest of February. Yes, and we all need a little bit more kindness in our lives right no now. Getting, you know, getting and receiving, right? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're approaching almost a year now on this, uh, you know, uh, pandemic thing that's going on. So I know it, people get pent up and are starting to feel like they're, at, uh, you know, living in a zoo a little bit. So please yep. be kind to each other and, and pay that forward to your friends. All right, so I don't know about you, Scott, but we had a great guest on tonight, uh, and I am also just as stoked about our guests on February 16th. Um, what about you? Absolutely, I, I can't wait to, to talk to him in person. I've seen a couple of his, his videos and watched him speak at conferences, and I'm really excited to have Ken on the show. Yeah, so join us on February 16th. Uh, Ken Shelton's gonna be on the show with us and we're gonna be talking about diversity, equity, you know, what it is like to be a minority educator or student in, in US education today. Uh, so please join us to talk to Ken. I um, can't wait to tap his brain and listen to all the amazing things that he'll be sharing with us. So join us on February 16th, uh, same time, same place or whatever channel you're viewing from. And we look forward to seeing you then. And if there's anything that you're dying to ask Ken or would like us to ask him, don't, be afraid to let uh, Scott or I know. Give us a, a shout out on Twitter, send us a DM or something and let us know what you were dying to ask Ken and we will work that into our conversations. So thanks guys. For, yeah, thanks all for joining us tonight. Um, it's been a pleasure as always. Hopefully you all were able to learn something new tonight and uh, got some a little bit of Mike's passion and energy to take along with you. As always, our show is on demand, so you can uh, watch it this in replay if you didn't get enough of it tonight or you want to go back and hear Mike's tip or his feature one more time. You can do that at aka.ms forward slash US Microsoft EDU live. Good stuff. Robin, thanks for another great show. Always good to see you. And I definitely am fired up for all these new tools, having Mike in the show and 
like we said, looking forward to seeing Ken in a couple weeks. Yes, and thanks for all the guests that are joined us tonight. We appreciate having you here and uh, look forward to many more of these episodes to come. Have a great night, guys. Keep those comments coming. We'll see you all soon.